Hi, and welcome to my office. I see it's more than a month since my last video. I always knew that the tra transition to running a, a Discord channel and a community and having people download and play with the code was going to take a lot out of me, but it seems to have... Um, it's longer than I wanted to. Anyway, in today's video, I figured I would just start up the simulator itself, try and talk live over it, and talk a bit through the cloth simulation. In between all of the um, all of the Discord channel and the community building and reacting to people, I did find some time to program. And the cloth simulation is coming along really well, so let's take a look. Um, the very first thing I did this time around was to start with a whole bunch of debugging functionality that can step through the cloth, show me different ribs, show show the details inside of them so, so I can show and hide that. The aerodynamic coefficients, let's just step forward at least one one session. Now you can see that once, once the simulation has started, we've got um, the blue line is the internal pressure inside of the wing. Um, uh, from the air intakes, you can see it for rib number 62 at 0 0.91, the coefficient of pressure, angle of attack at 8.1 degrees, and we've got 10 meters per second um, air coming in, so 30 kilometers per hour. The the red red line there is angle of attack, and currently there is no all the there's no angle of break set because all all of them are exactly flat. We'll come to that. As I mentioned, I think the very first thing this time around was to really improve this level of feedback. Um, for this wing, I've got a whole bunch of parameters up here that I'll talk about, and there's a whole bunch of bigger simulation parameters down here that I will talk about. I can also switch to a line mode, which shows me all of the all of the lines. Um, those are the two carabiners, the two um, brake lines um, where, you, where the hand grips are. It shows half of the wing is as cloth the other half um, empty helps me to visualize and I can drag this along and it will show me exactly what's happening at that specific um, uh, rib in the in the structure the the main the main aim of this block of code really was to I guess to rewrite the cloth solver um, there was a lot of good reasons for this. I think the the very first version that I made was a little bit on the naive side, um, not quite optimized. Um, it suffered from precision problems, which I might uh, might leave for a different video that gets very technical. But I've gone and re instead of using floating point maths, I've rewritten it as custom fixed point mathematics to solve to increase the precision in the code, etc. Let me let me press play and then I'll talk over that. So I'm going to press play, start up the simulation, and you can start to see the whole thing move and animate. Um, it's now clear from the from the shapes up here that the uh, the angle of the tack is constantly animating as the wind blows over this. Oh, the carabiners and those are just clipped into fixed positions, and I'm blowing a absolutely steady wind from the front over this wing um, at a slightly upwards angle that I can't remember exactly what that is. The um, Over here you can see the time running up in seconds. It's clear to see that this simulation right now is not real time yet. I'm running it on a single core so it can be expanded to more cores. Um, but there's also a lot of there's a lot of fine work that needs to be done still. I mean as as amazing as it is that we can have this level of simulation, um, the I'll quickly touch on a couple of things that are extremely better than before. For one, you can see how absolutely rock solid this wing is sitting up there. So um, instead of a five millisecond time step, I'm doing my time steps at half a millisecond. So exactly ten times, ten times the update or every or 2000 hertz update rate um, for the wing um, the second is that instead of the long straight blocky lines that we have in the past I now have 2080 line segments so 
you can see that especially the brake lines with no power on them are beautifully curved as the wing is pushing them backwards. Um, this will also also comes into play really when the when the wing is slack or lying on the ground and the lines will fold and and curl and and behave like lines. Um, I also quite like. Let me just wait for a second here. If I if I pause that for a second, if you follow if you follow that line, I quite like the shape that it predicts the billowing in between the brake line attachments at the at the trailing edge. I think that. Those are looking pretty accurate at this stage. Quite like what's happening there. It's also very interesting if you look at the green line over here, the angle of break. You can clearly see. So um, I should flip this around to make it more intuitive. But each of the peaks is actually where a um, where a break line attaches, and then that the troughs are those are those little billows in between that you can see. Um, if we switch over to to line view and I'm just gonna set this to play again there's a whole bunch of bunch of things we can see I will turn the constraints on in a second but let's just go to let's go so so obviously this this is an intermediate this is between two of two of the ribs if I if I turn the constraints and you can see that there's there's a tiny little trailing edge mini rib but that's the only thing other than this this is pure cloth whereas if I move move just on to the next one you can see that this is a this is on a rib with with internal structures etc i'm going to turn that off for a moment so calculating the ang angle of break and this is needed for some of the aerodynamics code to couple this um i'm at this point i'm using i'll touch on that i'm using x foil to solve this probably looking at flow 5 or xflr5 um, in the near future not too sure yet um, i'm gonna i'm gonna experiment but all of those need this as a parameter so i needed a way to calculate it so i've calculated the th um, two-thirds cord length and then from that position just taking the angle to the to the trailing edge um, it should be clear if we go to i think let's just turn constraints on no still not yeah so if we go if we go to one where there's where there's a brake line attaching at the trailing edge, you can see that that this dips down a little bit more. Um, on the on the aerodynamic side, so the gray line over here is the sum of all of the external forces that's getting applied to this wing. Um, slightly forward because most of that low pressure area is on this curved edge on on the front here. So that tends to pull that forward. The blue line is slightly problematic. Um, so that is the sum of all of the internal pressure of the wing. So it, the direction that it's pushing. I think I'm plotting it down here somewhere. Oh no, I'm I'm just writing it over here. So so we've got 21 newtons so almost two kilograms worth of force so this is only on this one single cell we've got two kilograms of force going upwards and then internal and what's the what was that before 40 grams worth of force unfortunately that needs to be zero my su suspicion is that it's that it's an error in the mathematics of the um, of the air intakes and that i'm calculating something wrong there um, so I will I will need to go and look at it. It's not it's not huge com compared to the compared to the total pressure, but it is there. The solid white is just gravity, but it does show you that my current area is about the size of of the gravity that affects this rib. So not good. Um, think that's it at the bottom here i'm plotting the coefficient of pressure as i mentioned at the moment i'm using x foil to solve to solve all of this for a lot of for a lot of things x foil is fantastic software um, it does have its constraints and um, which is why within the next week or so i'll start looking at at x flow i uh, not x flow flow five um, see where that goes um anything else let me take a quick look but we can go back back to the line 
line drawing. I think that's that is about it. So so the current set of I think for what where this is heading, the first thing is just more sanity checks. The I've I'm currently outputting those forces, but I actually need to output all of the line um, aerodynamic drag. Um, same, same for the pilot. Even even though this is clipped into anchors, I do calculate the pilot so long, so I might as well plot that, and just make sure that all of those numbers make sense. That there's nothing funny that slipped into any of them. Um, it's still quite possible that there's errors in the code. And I really have to find those before I even start chasing the errors in the um, in the cloth itself. And then, um, and then an export function between this and Flow Five. So I think, with a little bit of luck, I'm about a week away from starting some serious aerodynamic simulation. And that is about it for this video. I will I will try to be a try to be a bit more more um, timely on this um, I do think there's a there's space to make two solid um, two solid videos on the um, on this on this as a topic the one on on the meshing I think that that was a huge block of work more than a month of my time went into into how to mesh this in a way that's efficient enough that we can run it in real time and probably a whole video explaining exactly where I'm heading with the aerodynamic simulation as well. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to be back soon. Cheers.